Welcome to today's uh, edition of the Pano Video Podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about our latest uh, product release, which is Pano VDS 2.5. Uh, I'm Mike Fodor, Panologic's Vice President of Product Management, and joining me today is Ali O'Reilly, Panologic's Chief Technology Officer. It's a pleasure to be here, Mike. Uh, thanks for joining me, uh, Ali. So um, first off, for our viewers who aren't familiar with it, what is Pano Virtual Desktop Solution? Well, Mike, it's a complete solution that allows our customers to get up and running with desktop virtualization very quickly and easily. Uh, it includes three major components, which is um, really the uh, device that sits on the desktop, which is which is this over here. Uh, we call this the zero client because it requires actually no management or maintenance in any way. You you plug it in, you plug in your keyboard, your monitor, your mouse, all of your USB peripherals, and uh, it replaces your desktop, and everything just works, and you never have to maintain this in any way. So that big uh, uh, big tower PC gets replaced by this little uh, That's right, cube. by this little shiny silver cube. The, the PC gets gets thrown out completely. Um, and from a uh, and then because it's a, it's a complete solution, it doesn't only include this, it includes all the software you need to get your virtual desktop solution up and running. So this is all the software that runs in the data center, uh, this is the management software, the provisioning software, the driver software. Uh, everything is bundled together in one solution and most of our customers are up and running in 30 to 60 minutes. Right. So what are the benefits that an average IT department would get from this? Well, it really makes their life a lot easier in terms of managing desktop PCs. Uh, a lot of IT guys spend most of their days running around fixing people's computers. Uh, they spend a lot of time provisioning PCs, moving PCs around. Well, when you move everything into, into the virtual world, when you do virtualization, you move everything centrally into your data center, then all of those things that you had to do become you know, virtual. You can sit down and do them from your desk. Um, and a lot of times they're automated. And so if you have 50 people starting on Monday, well, when those people log in, our software automatically detects that they're logging in for the first time and provisions desktops for them. Uh, if you need to give someone memory upgrade, you turn a dial. Um, you never have to worry about someone's PC getting stolen and the data on it because all the data actually stays centrally in the data center. Uh, so just really all the same benefits that many people have already had with server virtualization, they also now get with desktop virtualization. Wow. So that sounds almost too good to be true. What uh, what are some of the challenges with this technology? You're right, Mike. Sometimes it does it does sound too too good to be true that you could just take someone's PC and um, and replace it with something this small and you know and, and deliver all of this value, all the same benefits of ser server virtualization. But it really is a reality, and and the biggest challenge is the fact that you're taking away someone's computer. They have this thing that they've been used to sitting on their desk, this big clunky tower, and you're taking it away and giving them something else. And, and sometimes users will look at you and say, hey, what is this? Is it, is it different? Um, you know, will I get the same user experience? And, and there are a lot of, you know, a lot of you know, concerns in the past, especially with, with older server-based computing technologies, um, about you know, what kind of user experience does the user get? Is it the same as a PC? And, and with you know, Pano Virtual Desktop Solution, we've done a lot to address that uh, and deliver you know, something that is is very very close to a full PC experience. Uh, so tell me more about that. Uh, you know, so what really is new with Pano VDS 2.5? Well, in the 2.5 release, we we now have uh, console direct technology, and what this really means is we've um, we've built a fully a completely fully native driver stack uh, that installs into Windows. And so the way to think of this device is is this is not a thin client. We call it a zero client because um, it really has no operating system, no drivers, no software on it. Uh, it's really like an extension cord. Uh, into the data center. And so the ports on the back of this device, the USB ports, the video ports, the audio ports, as far as Windows is concerned, even though it might be running in a data center hundreds or thousands of feet away or even you know hundreds of miles away, uh, Windows believes that this device is local hardware. Uh, it believes that the USB ports are local. So when you plug in a USB device, we just load standard USB drivers from Windows or from the, the vendor, and whatever device you plugged in just works. Uh, the same is true for video. Windows believes that this, you know, the VGA port on the back of this device is a local port. And so what Console Direct is, it's the set of drivers and technologies that get installed into the virtual machine to really make Windows believe that this is local hardware. It treats it like local hardware, and you end up delivering a local user experience. Even though there's a network in the path, Windows treats the user and give, provides the same experience to the user as if they were local, hmm. which, is, which is really very different than the old terminal services technologies. Yeah, so you know, aren't all virtual desktops console direct? No. Uh, no. In fact, most, uh, most of the vendors out there have actually based their, their virtual desktop technologies on older technologies called terminal services. And so you know, in, the, in the 
early to mid 90s, Citrix invented this model called Terminal Services, um, and Microsoft later rolled that into Microsoft Windows Server, and then eventually into Windows XP. Uh, it's the RDP and the ICA protocol, and and these are really about. Um, being able to take a, a PC or a server and have multiple users logged into it at the same time, each one having having a session delivered to them. Uh, it was not de designed to deliver a full PC experience to users. It was designed to deliver a more limited experience that was optimized for having a large number of users on a server, optimized for you know a very small number of applications running over a very low bandwidth link. Mm -hmm. and what we're really doing in this case is we've taken someone's desktop PC away and we're, we're delivering them a full PC experience over the network. And so the terminal services approach just is no longer the right way of doing it. The right way of doing it is what we've done with Console Direct. Okay. And so tell me more about how Pano has overcome some of these uh, limitations. Well, what we've really done to overcome the limitations is, is we've changed, um, we, we, we've made it so you can run Windows without really having to change the way Windows runs. Uh, in the terminal services approach, you're not talking to Windows the way uh, a PC normally talks to Windows. You're, walk, you're talking to Windows through this, you know, you know, through the sideband terminal services approach. What we've done is we've just said, we're going to take Windows operating system and move it into the data center. Uh, but Windows will still run the same way it's always run. It will still talk to display through display drivers. It will st still talk to USB through USB drivers. We've really changed nothing about the way Windows runs, which is why the user ends up getting the same experience as if the PC was local. And so that's for like multimedia, USB, touchscreens, anything that I could plug into my PC, I can pretty much plug into. Absolutely, and, and touchscreens is, is an excellent example. Um, getting touchscreens to work in, a, in the terminal services environment is, uh, is not trivial. It's a, it's a very kludgy type of thing because there are a lot of drivers involved and there's a lot of confusion about where do the drivers run, do they run on thin client, and are they supported for the thin client, and, um, and, and all of these, these things that become confusing. Well, in our model, because the Pano is really you know, local hardware as far as Windows is concerned, uh, you run touchscreens the same way you'd run them on a, on a regular PC. You install the drivers inside Windows and they just work and you don't have to do anything special. Everything just works the same. And that's the point. That's great. Um, so Ali, when uh, when using Console Direct, what's the end user experience really like? Well, Mike, it really is just like a PC. And, you know, like I've said uh, time and time again, it's because we treat Windows the same way uh, Windows treats a regular PC with local hardware, you really do get the same experience. For instance, um, we have uh, well, we have a customer who's running uh, MRI imaging applications, where you know this is something that's normally very intensive. It's the type of thing that uh, terminal services types of environments will just you know fall over on and not be able to deliver the same experience. Well, in our case, uh, we've we've actually been able to take PCs away, replace them with with panel logic on a large scale basis in a hospital where they're running you know MRI imaging apps and X-ray applications and um, and in that case the user experience has been rated a 9 out of 10 compared to a 10 out of 10 with a local PC and so really when it comes to Panologic what we've done is we've we've made it so that you can take someone's PC away and replace it with Pano deliver them the same user experience and we've made it easy because it's a full solution it includes the endpoint it includes the management software it's all bundled together in an easy to install way and so literally for customers who already have virtualization in place they've they're already running something like ESX and Virtual Center it's 30 to 60 minutes to get up and running. It just, it just works. Well, that's great. Well, uh, thanks, Ali, for uh, talking with us about uh, Pano VDS 2.5. And uh, thanks to all our viewers okay, out there for, uh, for joining us.